Hey guys, this month on the show we're talking with Nick Law from Channel 48 and also at the end of the episode, Draw has a review of The Sims Free Play for iPad. Alright, we're down at Space Camp and in front of the poker that the kids use when they're training. I'm hanging out with Nick Law over here from uh, Channel 48 News. How you doing, man? I'm doing well, buddy. How are you? I'm doing alright. So I've been wanting to talk with you for a while now. We, we tweet back and forth yeah. uh, pretty consistently. Yeah. Um, I start, first started following you when you were in the Shovels area for 48 over there. And uh, I think I first started following you when you were giving away an iPad when you were trying to get followers. We were, we were giving away an iPad um, and it was, it was just a, a contest that we came across. And uh, somebody in the Shoals actually won the iPad and then it turned into this huge thing because uh, people were upset that a local person won. Yeah. And, and they were like, like I couldn't believe the amount of criticism. I mean, it was only one iPad. It wasn't, uh, and it wasn't a 48 contest. It was just this thing that we kind of felt it fell in our laps over there. I didn't need it. How many followers did that get? Oh my goodness, uh, probably four, five hundred, six hundred right oh, away. Wow. And, and after the contest was over, I mean, it 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 dropped down quite a bit. But you know, to have that much in two weeks is, is kind of surprising. Yeah. It really took me by surprise. Well, to get 500 people right off the bat when you're doing something like that, get, that gets people to retweet you and to kind of spread the word and stuff like that. Well, and that's what it's all about now. Yeah. And it, whether it's journalism or a business or whatever you're doing, you're always trying to create your own personal brand. Mm -hmm. and these are opportunities that you can do that. And I don't think people understand that not only is this easy to do, but it's things that you need to do now to, uh, to support your brand. Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, I think you're most well known for using your, your Twitter, Twitter stuff uh, nowadays. <laughs> so, um, like, how does that play into what you do day to day when you're reporting for 48? Hey, you know what? I think, uh, like, I had this question the other day. I had somebody call me from a station up in Indiana, and they were asking me how I use social media, maybe in my job, and, and when to use it and when not to use it. And I told her, I said, I use it every day. I use it with every story I do. I might put three updates up for a story. I might put one update up for a story. I think everything has to have a, uh, you know, whether it's a breaking or it's an alert or it's an update or maybe you're asking a question. Yeah. Um, but I mean, there's, it's so easy to do. And I saw I, you were asking about the tax returns and something like <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, like, did you get some help for that? I, I got tons of help yeah. for that. I, I think I had like uh, 29 comments on my Facebook oh, page, cool. and I had several tweets back. I heard I had several people tweeting it on Twitter about that, and you know, like. I, it's crazy uh, how quickly that stuff goes to the masses, and the response, I mean, it is immediate response. Mm -hmm. You can tweet businesses, or a news personality, or whoever, and it could be a national brand, and they're going to tweet you back. I mean, it is one-on-one -on -one communication, and it's crazy that we've come so far in just a short amount of time. Yeah, one thing that I've always noticed is, like, the show seems to be, like, kind of above the curve when it comes to these kind of things. I've never really, really been able to figure out why. Why do you think? I don't know. I think, uh, you know, and it surprises me because I thought Huntsville would yeah. really be, you know, Huntsville is the rocket city. It's a very smart city. <laughs> we're sitting, look where we're sitting right now. There's some very smart people in this town. There's some very techie people in this town. There's people that understand electronics. The Shoals, I mean, we know it's different out there. It's uh, it's a little bit slower paced, uh, but at the same time, people very attracted to social media for whatever reason. Maybe it's their escape or, yeah. or an outlet or whatever it is, but they, they, they absorb news out there too. And, and to be honest, having spent almost two years out there, some of the craziest stories I've reported in my career were out in the shoals, which just <laughs> blows, and not only my mind, but some of my friends that are like, what are you reporting on in Alabama? I mean, that is a crazy story. Well, you know, it's funny. We're, we're from around that area, too. We're from Franklin County. And, like, one of the funny stories that came up from there in the past couple of days was a giant sinkhole outside of Russellville. But, like, you know, you hear that elsewhere, and you're like, oh, that's no big deal. But in Russellville, like, oh, my God, that's, like, breaking news. I, I, and not only, I had, like, a, I got picked up on Yahoo News on their, like, weird and odd stories one day on their wire <laughs> because I had a guy in Florence attack another guy during a drug deal with a Worcestershire bottle. I remember that. And, yeah. and I mean, like, like, <laughs> like, people ask me, like, what is, what was it like out there in the Shoals? And I say, it is the sweetest people. The, the people in the Shoals are the nicest. They're genuine. They are what I imagine Alabama to be like. But they also, like, there, there's a couple crazies out there. It can there, be weird, and, yeah. and it can be, but it's the same way in Huntsville, yeah. too. I mean, you, you just have that, it's just a, it's, it's rednecks and rocket scientists. Yeah. And, and, uh, and there's no in-between. And it's, I think it's the same way in the show. It's musicians, it's lawyers, it's doctors, it's journalists. 
and it's a couple of people that make some uh, really stupid decisions sometimes. You know, you bring up something that I, I wanted to ask you about real quick. The, I think Muscle Shoals is coming back when it comes to music because, you know, you got the Civil Wars, you got the Secret Sisters, you got the Alabama Shakes from around here. Well, not only that, you're having artists start to record down there that maybe people don't know about. I, I heard, and I, this is only rumor, so I don't know if this oh, is true okay. or not, uh, but I heard from a pretty well-placed source that the Black Keys actually recorded an album out in the Shoals before. Really? They, they've recorded certain tracks out there. Um, I know that the Civil Wars, I mean, everybody knows who they are these days. Um, you know, John Paul is from the Florence area. Uh, I got to see a private show with them oh, awesome. on top in, in Billy Reed's on their second floor up there at his place. It was, it was crazy. Uh, and to see those artists, and we just mentioned a couple, and there's yeah. so many to mention, but to see those artists, um, whether you like them or not, play on Leno. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, get nominated for Grammys, see them at these award shows, see them on Facebook and Twitter and have all kinds of followers from around the world. I mean, that is, it's crazy to me because we, they're, they're normal people like you and I. The Alabama Shakes in particular, they've like skyrocketed just over the past month. I saw that they got signed to, maybe not a record deal, but to press an album with a Jack Watts label in Nashville, Third Man Records. And, and that's like, that is the, it's nice to see that area have a comeback, yeah. because I feel like for, for several decades there, I mean, it was the hotbed. Yeah. And now, you I think it's coming it, back. Yeah, yeah I, I, it's totally coming back. And if you go out there, if you've never been out there, for people that have, I guess you should say, for people that have never been out there, to uh, go out there on a Friday night, there is... 20 places that'll have live music what, what's, and it's decent. What's some place you recommend? Oh, some place that I recommend to go in Florence. Uh, you know what? It's it's It sounds weird, but Swampers inside yeah. the, the Marriott there is probably my favorite place to watch a live musician. I don't know if it's the acoustics, it's kind of a smaller setting, but it's still pretty classy. Um, and they get some pretty good artists that come in there. I mean, we were talking about the Civil Wars. John Paul was in there watching uh, just an artist <laughs> he, wasn't on that. he was watching on a <laughs> Friday night with his wife, and I, this is maybe no more than two months ago. Wow, that's awesome. So, but that's what you get when you go to Florence, and you just don't, I think, uh, for people that aren't from there, they don't really understand it until they go. And then, where else are you going to have, you know, live music at a pizza joint yeah. on a Friday? I mean, I know that they do live music wherever they can do live music. Mm -hmm. You know, going back when we, uh, before we wrap up here in a minute, I wanted to ask you a little bit more about, like, journalism, specifically in the North Alabama market. Um, you know, things are changing a lot nowadays. Um, where do you think it is going to be in maybe the next 10 years? As far as ratings or as far as stations? Well, as far as like how journalists like you do your work and like how people interact with the station and stuff like that. I, I think if you're a student now, if I was to talk to a group of students, I would tell them that they need to learn, like we were talking about before, how to use Facebook and Twitter effectively. Um, but not only that, they need to keep up with technology. Um, they need to find out how technology uh, can make their job easier because it definitely can. Uh, and not only that, they need to learn. Um, everybody wants to be a free face, say on top. But if you can't write, if you can't get your story across, you can be the freest face in the world, but that's not going to help you uh, in this industry at all. Um, you need to be able to write. It goes back to the basics, and I really feel like we've lost that over the last decade and a half to two decades of people thinking that all it takes is uh, an Aaron Andrews type uh, to become famous. Uh, Aaron Andrews is a great reporter, um, but at the same time, you know, if you can't write or you can't come across and report a good story, that's your bread and butter. Yeah. If you look good, that's just part of it. You know, but if you don't know how to interact with your audience, if you don't know how to maybe shoot your own video if, you, if it comes to you, if you don't know how to generate your own sources and make friendships, make contacts that really you know mean something. Uh, you're not going to go anywhere in this business, and you're definitely not going to go anywhere in North Alabama. People here are very trusting, but at the same time, if you burn them, uh, you're never going to be able to talk to them again, and that might cost you not only maybe an exclusive interview, but a huge story. You know, I think you're right, and I'm thinking about this from like the other side of the TV. Um, a lot of times, I see a story on there, and I'm like, oh, why is this news? It's like about a celebrity or something like that. Sometimes the pretty face, I think, isn't necessarily the reporter, but it's the story. And I've noticed that you... You know, sometimes they do the funny stuff, but it is related to like serious issues sometimes. You know what? I, I think the damn story is one of them. Yeah, you know, that was awesome. We did a damn story, and, <laughs> and, and, and I, if you're going to do a story like that, um, you know, it's a serious issue. Alabama doesn't have any damn legislation. <laughs> but if you say it like that, it doesn't have any damn legislation. People love that. People love that, and people can 
they know that I'm a real person. I, I put my pants on like everybody else. Um, I'm, you know, if you come up to me, I'm just a normal guy that is working in my dream career. I have an opportunity to interact with awesome people all the time. And, um, you know, I try to show that I'm having fun. It's not just a job. Like, it literally, if it's not fun, you shouldn't be it. And I try to have a good time. One, I'm giving a story like that. Now, obviously, if it's a, a rape or a murder or something like that, you can't, you can't yeah. say those things. But, uh, but it's, I mean, you need to find that balance because you can't be um, Brian Williams or 60 Minutes in it up all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's, uh, it's all about having a personality and showing that personality at the right time and turning into that news well, Nick, listen, I really appreciate it. And listen, your enthusiasm for your craft is infectious. <laughs> you make me want to be a journalist. Thank also. you. Well, I mean, hey, you can always uh, you can follow me on uh, on Twitter. You can like me on Facebook. Uh, I have a blog. It's nicklaw.com. So you can always look there. I'm putting that. It's just kind of an op-ed piece uh, that I put on every every week, maybe twice a week, uh, just to let people know. Listen, we are real people. Uh, we don't cover bad news all the time. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, we want people to know that, that we want, I want people to trust me. I want people to, when they sit down at night, to go, okay, he's telling me the real story. So that's what we're trying to do, and, and it's a huge person on social media to be able to do that. So. Well, listen, man, I sure do appreciate you working. I appreciate you coming out and talking with us tonight. Perfect. Hey, this is Sharla, and the app that I'm going to review for you this month is Sims Freeplay for the iPad or the iPhone. Sims Free Play is an app that came out a couple of months ago, and obviously it doesn't cost anything. That's why it's called Sims Free Play. I take it that it's supposed to be more of a promotional game, kind of to get you to purchase the Sims PC or Mac game for your actual computer. Sims Free Play is limited in what you can do, but you can't really complain because, again, it is free. It didn't cost anything. Now, if you've ever played the original Sims, the one that came out back in the early 2000s, if you've ever played that, then you'll pretty much have the hang of Sims Free Play because it's very similar in that game. It doesn't have a lot of the, it doesn't have like Sims Medieval or Sims Hot Date or nothing like that. It's just your basic standard, put them in a house, make them go to work, build a fire station, just your basic Sims game. Since I got this game, I have been really, really hooked on it. I would definitely give it uh, probably an 8 out of a 10. Since I got this game, I've been really hooked on it. I usually have to check my Sims about twice a day, so it's, it's a pretty addictive game for sure. The pros of this game are it's free, it's addictive, it's fun. It's really, really fun. Now, it is similar, and I did catch on. It is similar. It reminds me a lot of Farmville for Facebook because... You can actually purchase extra simoleons or extra lifestyle points for your game. Now, you don't have to in order to play the game, but you can if you want to. Now, the cons of Sim Free Play is I have noticed that it is a bit buggy for an application. Matter of fact, it's probably one of the more glitchier apps that I've downloaded for iPad so far. Um, a lot of the times the Sims will actually, they'll go to work and then they'll go missing and you won't be able to find them in the game. So it does have a lot of bugs that it's still trying to work out. I've noticed that there have been a couple of updates. Um, so far, those updates haven't really fixed the glitches. Um, there is a new one that I haven't got yet, but hopefully that'll get it fixed. But other than that, it is an excellent game, and I definitely recommend it, especially since it's free. Um, you will definitely be hooked on it. All right, thanks for watching this month. We want to thank Nick Law again for his interview. And also, we want to thank local band Ashland Maine for the intro and outro music. You can find a little bit more of them at the end of the episode. As always, follow us on Twitter for updates on when we're doing new shows. And also, look at our Facebook page for all of our videos. Uh, we'll see you next month. As she walks, you watch her carefully. So carefully you think to yourself When the time comes to marry I hope you're not weary of me And I'll put in blood the amount How much I love you just to make you smile, I'll go the extra mile, I know.